Let us pray. God of surprising love and hope, we come today to the manger, gazing lovingly on the child born to bring hope to the world. Open our hearts tonight as we hear the story in you. Help us to be guided by the light of Jesus Christ, that we may truly feel power of your love and bring that love with joy to all who we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. newborn king, let our voices sing, him our praises. Hail, hail to the guiding light that brought us tonight to our Savior. Hallelujah. 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 To the knowing light of our stable, kneel close to the child so dear, cast aside your fear and be thankful. Hail, hail to the newborn King, let our voices sing Him our praises. Hail, hail to the guiding light. That brought us tonight to our Savior. We give thanks for loving parents, for the light of a star, for the radiance of angels, for the running feet of shepherds, for all the joy of that first Christmas. We thank you for today, that you have given our bodies life and breath this Christmas, that we are here now gathered across the conference, joined in one accord in prayer to you. Let the light of Jesus shine in our hearts as we come together for worship. Amen. In the hope of Christmas and the promise of Emmanuel, God with us, we stand on the threshold of another year. We thank you, God, for giving us another year of life even as so many have learned during the pandemic how precious the gift of life is. You have given us many gifts during the last year, a year that has been filled with tiredness, trauma, and trial. We realize that in the midst of the struggle, we haven't always figured out how to use those gifts or our loves as creatively and constructively as we might have. We confess ministry has been hard and holy as we lead across the conference. Settle us in as Mary, Joseph, and Jesus settled in that first Christmas. Help us, God, to comprehend 
what Emmanuel, God with us, means for individuals and for the world. Forgive us our failures, our weaknesses, our fears, and our doubts. Amen. In the name of the babe of Bethlehem, whose birth we celebrate, remember the Lord has comforted and redeemed us. Recall the words of the angels, good news, great joy, all people. In Christ we receive the salvation of our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Glory to God in the highest. It's finally here. It's finally here. Do you love Christmas? I know I do. What do you like best about Christmas? Is it the Christmas tree with all the lights and decorations? Is it the Christmas songs like Santa Claus is coming to town? Well, what I like about Christmas is I like Christmas movies. I like to watch How the Grinch Sold Christmas every year. It's my favorite. I'm sure you have some favorite Christmas things that you do in your home every year, and I bet you are excited too. What else, though, happens on Christmas? Have I left out anything? What could it be? Oh, yes, it's Jesus' birthday on Christmas. You know, sometimes we get so excited about all the parties and the lights and the presents that we forget about why we have Christmas in the first place. I actually want to tell you a story about a little girl who wanted to go to the circus. She wanted to go to the circus so bad. And one day at school, she saw a poster on the wall that said the circus was coming to town on Saturday and the tickets to the circus cost one dollar. So she ran home right away and asked her mom if she would give her a dollar so that she could go to the circus on Saturday. Her mom told her that if she got all her chores done, that she could go to the circus with the dollar that she gave her. So the little girl did all of her chores in record time. And she earned that dollar from her mom. She was so excited. The little girl couldn't wait uh, to get to the circus and see all the animals, the trapeze artists, and all of the things that come with a big, exciting circus. Then when she woke up super early on Saturday morning, before the sun rose, she headed into town to see the circus before anyone else could get there. In fact, she was there so early that she had a chance to see all the animals, all the circus performers, and all the people head into the tent. One by one, she saw everyone go into the tent. And finally, she saw the circus master, who showed up last and headed inside to get ready for the show. When the little girl saw the circus master, she gave him the dollar with a big smile on her face, and she said, thank you, that was a great circus. The little girl had it all. She never knew what she had missed. She thought she had seen the circus, but really she had only seen the setup. Well, all the lights, all the trees, all the songs, all the presents, they are all the setup. Because Jesus is the reason for Christmas. He is the big celebration. The presents, trees, songs, food, and movies are great. But this year, don't forget that they are what happens because Jesus is born. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture reading for today comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For a child has been born to us, a son is given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, 
and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be no end to his peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This ends our reading. May God bless into our hearing and understanding. Our gospel reading comes from Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 through 20. Listen for this, the word of God. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child, lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The word of God for the people of God. I'd like to share with you today from the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament, the uh, seventh chapter beginning with the tenth verse. And this is a familiar Christmas scripture reading. And it talks about how Isaiah is going to give Ahaz a sign of Emmanuel. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask the sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him. Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread of will be deserted. May the Lord add the Lord's blessing to the reading and to the understanding of the Holy Word. King Ahaz was a jerk. There's hope for me because God still was willing to give him a sign. Now, he may sound all righteous and says, I'm not going to put the Lord, the God, to the test. But in 2 Kings, King Ahaz clearly doesn't do the right thing. Let me explain. The year is 734 BCE, before the common era, before even the birth of Christ. And there's a major power, super, uh, major power emerging on the world, and it's called the Assyrians. The Israelite people have separated into two kingdoms, and about 200 years after King Solomon. The northern kingdom of Israel has aligned itself with Syria, and they wanted a southern kingdom to join them. But Ahaz was afraid. He was afraid that Israel, when they they joined together, they're going to put a puppet king and control him. So Ahaz even got more afraid. Isaiah basically tells Ahaz to trust, trust, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord, and I'm going to save the kingdom. Now, King Ahaz wants more assurance. He resorts to sacrificing his son to a Canaanite god named Moloch. You see this in the book of Kings. 
King Ahaz hoped that Moloch would be able to save him. Now Isaiah asked for King Ahaz to ask for a sign. A sign that the Yahweh would take care of him, that the Lord would take care of him. But Ahaz said, no, 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 I'm not going to put the Lord to God to the test. So basically Isaiah says, here's your sign. A young woman is with child and she will name him Emmanuel. Now, as most of you know, the Hebrew word that is used in this scripture is, is young woman. And if you go to the earlier translations of the Greek, it's often said virgin. So it's a little bit of a toss back and forth. What are they talking about at the time? Well, we get an insight on who and what Isaiah is talking about. He says that this baby that is going to be born will eat curds. They eat curds. So we're talking probably about two to three year time frame. We're not talking about an event that's 734 years in the future, even though there is some relation, and we read it around the time of Christ. There is something to do with it. But God is saying, I'm not going to do that to you. I mean, you've got two armies breathing down your back. I'll answer your prayer in 734 years. You know, Come back and see me then. No. God's going to say something about now. Now, this is my favorite part in this whole scripture. King Ahaz needs an army. He gets a baby. King Ahaz wants some F-35 Lightning II fighter jets. He gets a baby. He, he wants some B-21 Raider bombers. He gets a baby. He needs SEAL Team 6. He needs the Delta teams to come on. He needs the Green Berets, and he gets a baby. A little defenseless poo-producing baby. King Ahaz told him to stand firm, to stand firm in the faith. God told him, just stand firm and it will be okay. Well, King Ahaz doesn't trust in just having a baby. He makes a deal with the Assyrian king and he empties out the temple treasure and basically gives everything to the Assyrians. But the Assyrians come, take over Judah and the Samaria and the Assyrians, and they let him be king for a little while as a puppet king, but eventually Judah is even lost also, and the kingdom did not stand. So what's all this got to do with Christmas and for us today? Well, in a very real way, that's the power of Scripture. It can talk to something 730 years uh, before the birth of Christ. It can talk about the time of Christ, and it can even talk to us even today. What am I talking about? You get a baby. When the cancer biopsy comes back positive instead of negative, you get a baby. When the final exam is marked F rather than an A, you get a baby. When your spouse of 15 years stomps out the door and does not come back, you get a baby. When the company reorganizes and downsizes, you get a baby. When the late night phone call comes in and communicates a death and not a birth, you get a baby. When you're longing for a Norman Rockwell Thanksgiving and holiday season is erupted with shouting and screaming, you get a baby. And when you're so lonely, it literally aches over the holiday season, you get a baby. And if you're struggling to come out of a pandemic that has changed literally everything, you get a baby. But the good news is that this baby, this baby named Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, the Lord of Savior of the world, is all you need. We all get a baby, a baby named Emmanuel, and it's all we need. We got to resist the temptation to think that's not enough. We got to resist the urge to take matters into our own hands like King Ahaz is. We got to resist the thinking that a baby is not enough to be a sign. But it is. Thank God we get a baby. Because a baby's all we need. You get a baby. If you choose, you can be instruments of hope in the world. We so choose. So we go to spread the hope and promise of a coming child. If you choose, you can counter the voices of anxiety and despair 
in the world. We so choose, so we sing songs of hope, because the world can be changed. If you choose, you can fight against the fear that freezes the heart of many. We so choose, so we will tell of the love that conquers fear, the love of a child in a manger. The choice is ours to make, how we live into the possibilities of Christmas. The beauty is that we do not live out the choice by our own strength. Go with God, who feeds our hopes and quiets our fears. Always and everywhere. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, now give us the care to shape the moments of this next year into gentle expressions of concern and compassion. May the year ahead be fulfilled with achievements that bring you glory, where wrongs can be corrected, friendships deepened, the disheartened encouraged, hope realized. Help us to express your love even as you continue to extend love to us. Amen. And may you all be blessed in the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to be good news sharers, good news doers, as we extend this truth into the world. We've all been given this baby. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,